Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome to day 8 of our video broadcast. We're fasting for 40 days and so far we've done one week. So welcome to the second week. And if you've been following the video devotionals, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Please leave me a comment or a message in my inbox. I would love to hear from you. So today we're talking about watch to hear the voice of God, part one, watch to hear the voice of God. Does God speak to his disciples these days? Certainly, God speaks night and day in various ways. Do the disciples, me and you, do we hear the voice of God? That's another question. Unfortunately, most of us do not hear the voice of God. In fact, I found out that some people don't even know when God is speaking to them. They don't even know. They don't hear um, the voice of God and they don't even recognize his voice if he is to speak to them. So the question is why? Let us begin by stating the position of God regarding speaking to us. John chapter 10 verse 1 to 5. Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. Remember when Jesus was sharing this? He says, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he, begin, he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. So the shepherd of a sheep, you know, his sheep will know, will hear his voice, and they would know um, the voice of the shepherd. Jesus Christ calls us by name, by name so that we can hear him. It is so vital that Jesus Christ declared about other sheep or other, or as a the case will be the Gentiles. And he still talks about the other sheep, which are the Gentiles. People who are not yet born again now could be re um, regarded to be Gentiles. Because we who have been born again, we are now like spiritual Israel. And he says, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also must I bring, and they will hear my voice. Speaking of you and I, because we were once Gentiles, but now that we're saved, he, talk, he, he made this prophetic statement about you and I. And today we are saved, and we hear his, his voice. And, and he says, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 16. The disciples, the disciples of God, they knew, they know his voice. Not just um, the disciples of Jesus, but you and I, we know his voice. We're supposed to know his voice. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the tree trees of the garden. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. Adam and Eve heard the sound of God walking in the garden of Eden. God had not changed. He has not changed. And at that time, he remains the same. God still desires to communicate with us everywhere and anytime. Furthermore, in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, God declared, Surely I will pour out my spirit on you, excuse me, and I will make my words known to you. God has promised us that He would pour out His Spirit on us. And then He has also He has also promised that He will make His words known to us. God is spirit. Therefore, until we have his Holy Spirit, we cannot hear his voice. This is why it's vital for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit immediately or preceding, immediately preceding after you had um, given your life to Christ. Okay, so until we have his Holy Spirit, we cannot hear his voice and we receive his Holy Spirit at the point of our conversion. Definitely, our father is del delighted to speak with us. And he speaks and we listen. We speak and he answers. It's a two-way thing. When you pray, you should stop to listen. You know, that's how I teach children. When you pray, you stop, wait a little bit and hear what he has to say to you. In fact, during your prayer time, you find that it's a communication. God speaks to you and you also respond. That is Then why is it that many disciples do not hear the voice of God? If God hears you, if God answers, if God responds, why is it that we do not hear the voice of God? Firstly, Many of us are not listening. 
we are too busy with other issues of life or we have to deliberately set out time to be still before God. Luke chapter 5 verse 16, it says even Jesus Christ, sorry, Psalm 46 verse 10, we have to deliberately, I, was, I started by saying you must deliberately set time to be still before God. Psalm 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Even Jesus Christ practiced it while physically on the earth. Luke chapter 5 verse 16 says that Jesus himself often withdrew into the wilderness and he prayed. Secondly, you must walk in the spirit to hear the voice of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Conversely, this scripture implies that if we are God's children, if we are born again, we will be led by His Spirit. But we must willingly submit to the Holy Spirit. Okay? We must willingly submit to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is gentle. I often say He's a gentleman. He only operates based on what you surrender to Him. If you surrender your whole body to him, he will hear you will hear him whenever he speaks. Consciously and sincerely surrender your whole body, spirit, soul, and body to him every day. The steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. I'm sure you've heard that scripture before. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Psalm 37, 23 to 24. The good man in that scripture refers to one who is born again. It refers to you and I. Thirdly, many times some disciples of God are not desperate enough to hear him. Jeremiah chapter 29 from verse 11 to 13. It says, Therefore I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. God demands 100% of our hearts, not 99%. When we sincerely surrender 100% of our hearts to him, we shall always hear his voice in small issues and also in big issues. God does not stop talking to us because he is with us. Okay, he talks with us all the time and he talks to us. God loves us so much and he loves our relationship with him. How much of your heart have you given to God? The fourth point is that some disciples of God do not even perceive his voice because they are not in expectation. God speaks to you all the time, but you're not even um, hearing. You can't even hear, you can't even recognize his voice when he's speaking to you. Why? Because you are not in expectation of the almighty God speaking to you in a very personal, intimate way. Jeremiah chapter seven, verse 13. I spoke to you rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear. And I called you, but you did not answer. Do you understand? God calls you. God speaks to you sometimes, but you don't even hear. You don't even answer. And this is the reason why most believers will look for a prophet, you know. And even after my um, the words that I shared, you know, there's some people that still inbox me and say, please tell me my future. Please tell me what is the next step. If you're in so much darkness concerning your life, you need to take some time out and pray and commune with God. Wait on him and hear what he has to say concerning your future or concerning the next step that you want to take. All right? For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream or in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their, on their beds. This is Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 15. That God may speak in one way or another, yet man does not perceive it. So that means God can speak to you in a dream. He can speak to you in the vision of the night when everyone is asleep or when you are asleep. Some of your dreams are actually messages from God. Now, even in our dreams and visions, God reveals his secrets to us. But we must be in expectation. You know very well that the expectation of the righteous cannot be cut off. Commit your ways to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. 
Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Hear this now, O foolish people, without understanding, who have eyes and see not, and who have ears and hear not. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 21. We really don't want to be people like that and miss the counsel of the Lord for every stage of our lives. The fifth point is unbelief. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Whatever is not from faith is sin. Romans chapter 14 verse 23. In Isaiah 30 verse 21, he says that your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. Sometimes a disciple will hear a voice or a thought props up in his mind. He assumes it must be from his flesh or from Satan. He therefore ignores the message and moves on with his schedule. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23 to 24. Because I have called you and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. This is a sad situation. The sixth point is immaturity. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to still teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 to 14. God is a loving father par excellence. Just like earthly parents, okay, we love to watch our children grow in maturity with great delight. But when but some disciples are not making efforts to grow in their work with God. Philippians 2 verse 12 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Walk out your salvation with fear and and trembling. The Greek meaning for work out is continually work to bring something to completion or to fruition. How does a disciple of God achieve that? Through a lifestyle of obedience in the path of progressive sanctification towards the goal of manifestation of Christ likeness. That is our goal that we manifest being Christ like. Glory to God. As the disciples walk the, as we disciples, we walk the path of progressive sanctification. That means we are sanctified every day gradually. Our perception of the voice of God in various forms grows to be sharper. Furthermore, as we obey every instruction of God, the will of God becomes clearer every day. The seventh point is lack of willingness to consciously pursue holy living. The command is very specific. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. First Peter chapter 1 verse 13 to 16. Our God is absolutely holy all the time for eternity. We cannot be absolutely holy, but we can pursue, propose in our hearts to pursue holy living. Since it is the command of God, he will grant us the grace to grow in holy pursuit in all our conduct. I share two scriptures which guide us regarding how we can achieve a lifestyle of growing in holiness. The first one, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of weaknesses, let us lay aside every weight, weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. I love this scripture, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2. I often say walking in faith is looking unto Jesus. I beseech you then, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to god which is your reasonable service do not be conformed and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god that is romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2 let's pray together we're going to personalize and pray romans chapter 6 from verse 12 to 18 in our prayers okay so we pray this with this i'll read the scripture and then we'll pray it says therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its loss father lord we pray in the mighty name of jesus and we declare that we do not let sin reign in our mortal bodies and we do not obey its lost we do not obey sin in its lust in the name of Jesus. And we do not present our members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But instead we present ourselves to you, O God, as being alive from the dead. And as your members, and our members as instruments of righteousness unto you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare that sin shall not have any dominion over us. For we are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law? Shall we sin because we are not under law? Certainly not. Father, we thank you because we know that we present ourselves, ourselves slaves not to obey sin because for whom we present ourselves slaves to obey, then we are the one, we are that person's slaves to obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Instead, we present ourselves as slaves of obedience leading to righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God, Father, that we are no longer slaves to sin. We thank you that we are no longer slaves to sin, for we have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine to which we have been delivered in the name of Jesus. And we have been set free from sin and we have become slaves of righteousness. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I pray for you today and I declare that your day is blessed. I declare the favor of God upon you today in the mighty name of Jesus. I call forth your day to be productive in the mighty name of Jesus. You have found favor with God, therefore you have found favor with man in the mighty name of Jesus. Go and do exploits today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.